And sometimes we say, God, why can't I have, why couldn't I have this? Why couldn't I have this? There are things that God said, well, because I know you don't know all the reasons, but I do, and I have something higher. Israel and the nations. You know, other, there are other nations were far worse than Israel. Pagan nations, surrounded by pagan nations. But Israel had known more, seen more, been given more. So more was required. And so judgment came to Israel that didn't come to the other nations in the same way. The fall was greater of Israel because they knew more. They were given more. Just like, that's why I fear for America. Because with the judgment comes to America, if it does not turn back, it will be more severe. The Jewish people, chosen, pulled out of the world, chosen, not better, but chosen to be God's servants and his ministers to the world, and were given more. And there are people who say, oh, I wish I was Jewish. You know, I wish, I, well, really? Well, first of all, in the Lord you are born again spiritually Jewish. That's good. But there, there, there's a, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a movie, you, many of you know it, Fiddler on the Roof. And, the, and Tevya, the Jewish milkman around Russia, says to the Lord one day, he says, I know we are the chosen people, but could you choose somebody else occasionally? Because it's not easy. The Jewish people were called to be a kingdom of priests. They were, as, as, they were to be priests as, as priests were to the Israelites. Israel was to be a priestly nation to the world. And it has been. Because, the, because if you're saved today, it was because Israel gave you that. From, through Israel, the gospel came to you. That's priestly. You were reconciled to God. So it is the priestly nation. Or to put it another way, the Jewish people were in a sense the Nazarites of the world. Because they were set apart by God. They were constant. And as the Nazarites couldn't do what other Israelites could do, so the Jewish people couldn't do what other nations could do. They could only eat certain foods. They could not have those other foods. They were restricted in what they did, how they did it. They were held more accountable than the nations. No nation has gone through what the Jewish people have gone through. No nation. There are many nations that have suffered, and, but no nation has so suffered for so long. Much was given, much is required. Much is given, that's a blessing, but if you turn away from God, much is required. They were given, but, they, but on the other hand, much was required of them, but they were given much. The Word of God, the tabernacle, the priesthood, the glory, the covenants, the prophets, the Spirit, the revelation of God, the presence of God, the, the calling, the ultimately the Messiah. So they were blessed. It's a blessing in the end. It's blessing, but much is required. Much was given. They were held to a higher standard. There used to be a commercial on television which was for Hebrew national hot dogs. And they had a picture of, of Uncle Sam. And, and they said, well, Uncle Sam, the government can do this, but we cannot do this with our hot dogs. You know, the government can do this, and that's Uncle Sam, but we cannot. And then finally he says, well, we answer to a higher standard. So he's talking about God's kosher law. So Uncle Sam looks up to God at the end. Well, they were given a high, the, the, the truth is they were given a higher standard. But within Israel, you see people who are the great people of Israel, they themselves were given a higher standard. They were held to a higher standard. Moses, you know, much was given. Much was given. But much was required. Do you know Moses almost got killed once because he didn't circumcise his children? God says, you're going to be the lawgiver. You're going to be, you, better, you, have a, you better follow the law because you are the representative. You are my representative. Ezekiel, look at all the, pro, the prophets. Ezekiel, given a great calling of God, but he had to live in obedience. And he had to go through what a prophet goes through. You want to be a prophet? They had, the real prophets of God weren't those who, who called themselves on the radio. I am the prophet, the great prophet, this, this. They didn't do it. They, were, they went through a lot in being prophets. There was a price. But... They had, the, they, had the, they had God speak through them, take over them, use them mightily. Paul, if any man was used of God, kind of like the Moses in the Old Testament, Paul was used powerfully, yet he, he was a price. He couldn't live. He said, I can't do these things that everybody can do. I, you know, I, I can't take away, I can't do this because this is what, I, this is what God's called me to. He had to spend his life. He dealt with a lot of stuff, went through a lot of stuff, went through dangers, went through all that. But, but he was Paul. He did, he changed the world. 
because he was consecrated to God. Perfect? No, none of them were perfect, but consecrated to God. He was anointed. Funny, when he, when he, when he gets saved, God speaks to Ananias and says, go, Tell him how much he's going to suffer for me. <laughs> you know, that's it. But he's also, he'd also he's going to speak to kings and emperors and he's going to change the world. He's going to bring the gospel to the nations. I'd rather have that and the price than not have either. The disciples, much was required of them. They had to give up everything, their former lives, and go through everything. We don't know. Church history says they were, they were just about all martyred except for John. We don't know, but chances are a, a good amount were, if not all but they lived lives of glory. We're all going to leave this life. They lived lives of glory. They did what was required. Not perfect. Peter certainly wasn't perfect, but he was lived a glorious life. Look at the 12, look at the 12 sons of Israel. Which one was the one, and that's in the early account, who was glorified, who was lifted up, who was exalted? Which one? Joseph. But he's the only one who goes through what he went through. He went through rejection. He, went, he was sold into slavery, false accused of rape, imprisoned. And yet he stayed faithful to God. And, not, you know, and, and none of his brothers would know that, what Joseph knew, the glory of God. He would be used to save his family and save an entire world. Much was required, but much was given. What about you? Much is required of you. Why? Number one, God gave you life. You got life. Everything you have is from God. You, he gave you life. And so every moment you have is to be used for God. You know, he gave you life. He, so that, that's the first thing. You're in his image, first thing. Number two, he gave you salvation. So now you know God like most people don't. You know the, the word as most people don't. You have God as most people don't. So you have a higher requirement. You cannot live as the world lives. You can't give yourself to what the world gives itself to. Just like he called, as he called Israel and he said, you can't do what the nations do. They do this, this, this. You can't do that. Same way God says, you cannot live like the world lives. You, why? Because he's punishing you? No, because he has given you more. He's given you more. You're accountable for it. You're accountable to live in a manner worthy of it. Much has been given. And you are commissioned to give the salvation to the lost in your life because nobody else can do it. Only you can do it. You have salvation. You know they don't. So what are you doing? You are commissioned. That's required of us. He said, go. Amen. And, every, and, and furthermore, everything that God has given you, he's blessed you. There is a responsibility that goes with it. He gave you, if he gave you an ability, a talent, a gift, he gave you resources, he gave you money, he gave you what? Blessing? You're required to give it back and use it for his glory. That's right. Whatever you are, you've been given more, you have to give more. And that's how it goes, and he will give more. At the same time, the more you're committed to God, the more he will give. Amen. You are a child of God. That's a high calling. How does a child of God love? How does a child of God act? How, what does a child of God do when he or she is in private, in secret? What does a child of God do on the internet? What does a child of God do? The Bible says you have a high and holy calling. It says live, Paul said, live in a manner worthy of the high calling. He didn't say some of you have it and some of you don't. He didn't say the pastor has it and you don't. He said all of you have a high calling. Live. What is the requirement? Live in a manner that is worthy of holiness, of purity, of righteousness. Israel, okay, as a nation had requirements that the pagan world did not. Then from Israel, you have the tribe of Levi. God separated them. They had more requirements than the Israelites, their brothers did, but they had a higher calling. Then from the Levites, God took the priests out, Aaron's sons, and they had a higher requirement. They had other things they couldn't do that the Levites could do, and the Levites could do things, could not do what the Israelites could do. And then you have the high priest, Thy priest taken on. He was, he had even more requirements, but he was even, had a greater glory. He's the only one who could enter into the presence of God that one time into the Holy of Holies. The Bible says you're a priest of God. That's an honor. But how does a priest live? How does a priest talk? What does a priest do when he or she is alone? 
How does a priest, what does a priest watch on television? What does a priest not watch? What is, you know, this is the one that the ears were to be anointed, the, 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 the hand, every part was to be anointed. An anointed person, how does a priest spend his or her time? When I was growing up, there was, there was a kid in the neighborhood, pretty much did whatever he wanted. His parents were just laissez-faire, hands off. They didn't really care that much about, you know, they figured it's, he's okay, you know. I will call him Stephen so I don't get sued in case he's around. He's probably a grandfather. And we'd complain, all the other kids would say, how come we can't be like Stephen? You know, they let him, he can stay out all night, he can do all this and all this, how can we do that? And, and, and the parents would say, well listen, because we require this of you. We require more of you. You can't just do this and you've got schoolwork and you have this. We require more. So because we had a, they, in, in, this is in now, now my parents didn't know the Lord and they're speaking in natural terms, but they're speaking the same way. In other words, you've got, we are expecting higher things of you, a higher calling. So you can't just do everything because of that. And sometimes we say, God, why can't I have, why couldn't I have this? Why couldn't I have this? There are things that God said, well, because I know, you don't know all the reasons, but I do, and I have something higher. There are things that God used in your life that were hard things, rejection and hard things and heartbreak that God used to separate you unto himself. Amen. He did that with a priest by the command of the priesthood, but he did it with you through life. Yes. He actually used things so that you would become his own high holy to the Lord. He did a Nazarite in the sense that he separated you. Most of you came to the Lord because he used something. Amen. So he still uses it. So don't despise it. Because he had something, I have something more for you. When I was working with disabled children, I had come to the Lord. I came to the Lord in college. Then I was working, I was doing ministry on my, like not officially, but all different kinds of ministry. But I was working with disabled children. And there was a, a Christmas party for all the workers, all the, you know. It was at a hotel. At the end, one of my supervisors a, a, a lady who was a boss who, who was one of my bosses who was a bit under the influence of drinks at that time, maybe a lot, and she said, oh, we're all going upstairs. We're all, everybody from, the, from here, we're all going upstairs. We have a room. We're all going upstairs. You know, we're going to continue. And, and she said, come on up. I said, no, nah, it's all right. She said, come on. I said, no, it's all right. She says, there's an order. I, well, I said, all right, all right. I stupidly went up. And people are sitting around, some are drunk, and I, I, I sit down, and this woman, who is one of my bosses, comes over to me, and it looks like she's coming over to sit on me, on my lap. And I'm thinking, no, she can't, this can't be. Sure enough, she's drunk, she's trying to sit on me. I don't know what to do, it's a boss, you know. I instinctively start pushing her, and she's pushing back, and I'm pushing, and she's pushing, and my coworkers are looking in horror. Finally, I don't know what happened, but I just got up, I pushed and got up, and she fell on the floor. And she, she turns around and yells, you're fired. <laughs> now I guess if you could say there was something redeeming in, the, in, in this is that because she was drunk, she forgot all about it. <laughs> but the point is I should have been wise enough to not even go up. I'm not saying God, there's a rule on that. God could use somebody to witness, but not wise. I shouldn't even been in that position. Much is given, much is required. You can't do everything that everybody does. One night, <laughs> I'm embarrassing myself here. I don't know if I should do that. <laughs> One night I was up late and, the, and at, what into the next morning, it was like 5.30 in the morning and I realized I hadn't taken out the garbage. And the truck was coming, so I don't know if that ever happened to you. The truck, he's trying to beat out the truck. And so I run out with the garbage, but I wasn't fully dressed. But nobody was up, it's 5.30 in the morning. I had a t-shirt, I had baggy shorts, which are like, with, like technically though they were underpants. And I run out quickly, and nobody's gonna see me. I run out, I put the thing, and all of a sudden I hear, Pastor! <laughs> it's 5.30 in the morning, Pastor. That's not the word you wanna hear when you're like that. Turned out it was my upstairs neighbor, it was like an 80 year old woman who was out, came out, I don't know if she was doing the same thing and she knew I was a pastor and she starts a conversation with me, oblivious to everything and I'm just trying to get in with my polka dot underpants, just run inside. She just goes on and on. But I shouldn't even have taken that risk. You have a responsibility, everything you do in public and private, you are a representative of God. And since I'm embarrassing myself and you seem to enjoy it, I'll have one last embarrassment. I was once at a supermarket at this checkout and they have all these tabloids, you know, 
those tabloid things, you know. And I usually ignore it. They're usually stupid, you know. And, 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 but there was one thing, oh, that looked interesting. So, you know, should I? Well, so I'm waiting. So I start, I just take it, I start opening it. And then just then, as I'm doing, a, a, a middle-aged uh, African-American uh, from a woman from a Pentecostal, had to be from a Pentecostal background, on my left, she says, you! <laughs> she says, I can't believe it's you! And she's, she's shouting, this is a man of God! And I'm holding this thing in my hand. She says, I have to touch your hand. I say, no, 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 don't touch my hand. No, 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 you don't have to do that. I have to touch the hand of the man of God. She literally, so I, so I, I put his, I give her my left hand. She takes the left hand and says, whoa, I feel the glory. I feel the power. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm trying to dispose of this thing and push it out. Wherever you are, you are a witness of God. You are his witness. You have a greater responsibility. You are responsible for everything God's poured into you. And if God corrects you, thank God for it. Because it means you've got a daddy. It means you're not an orphan. It means you're called. You've got a calling. Thank God, Lord, thank you for correcting me. Because you love me. And if you have more opposition, thank God for it. Because the enemy knows you have a calling and he hates the calling. Thank God for it. I remember as a child in school, there were some teachers, not a lot of them, but there were some teachers, I remember a few, just a handful, that they said to me something like, Jonathan, we expect a lot of you. We expect you're going to do great things, but it's like an incentive. It was like a charge. And a charge, like on one hand, it's like, whoa, I don't know if I want the charge, but, but, it says, but, but God has an expectation. He charges you. He expects great things. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you haven't done. It doesn't matter what your past has been. God has called you as his child and says, I expect great things. God entrusts you with more. More is required. He doesn't expect you to stay the same. He expects you to grow. He expects you to break forth in victory. God expects change. He expects holiness. He expects more. He expects more from us in ministry, in service, in, in the fruit of the Spirit, in, in love, in righteousness, in confidence, in power. Too much is given, much is required. But also the one who gives much to God, who says, yes, Lord, is going to be given more. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.